It is now my pleasure and privilege to introduce our investiture speaker this year. Each year, the Thayer School recognizes a graduate or friend of the Thayer School with the Robert Fletcher Award, given in recognition of distinguished achievement and service in the highest tradition of the school. When Robert Fletcher was selected by General Sylvanus Thayer, Thayer and Dartmouth President Dodge Smith to become Thayer's first professor and dean in 1870, Fletcher was a 23-year-old Army lieutenant serving as an assistant professor of mathematics at the U.S. Military Academy. Over the ensuing 65 years of service to Thayer and the community as professor and dean, a record that I am quite confident will never be broken, Fletcher left a strong, lasting impression on generations of students. For students, his accomplishments as director and teacher almost invariably merged with his quality as a human being. As Sylvanus Thayer was the father of the military academy, Robert Fletcher was, in many ways, the father of the Thayer School. In addition to leading the engineering school, he designed and supervised construction of bridges across the Connecticut and White Rivers, waterworks for the towns of Hanover and Enfield. His many activities contributed importantly to the early prestige of Thayer School, the betterment of his community, and the advancement of engineering education. The individual selected to receive Thayer School's Robert Fletcher Award must possess the qualities exemplified in the life and work of this truly remarkable individual. Today, we are honored to present the 2017 Fletcher Award to Francis Arnold. Francis Arnold is the Dickinson Professor of Chemical Engineering, Biochemistry, and Bioengineering at the California Institute of Technology and an expert in protein engineering. Working on evolutionary protein design methods, she uses the results of laboratory evolution experiments to elucidate principles of biological design. Her lab generates novel enzymes and organisms for applications in medicine, neurobiology, chemical synthesis, even alternative energy and also constructs entire synthetic families of enzymes and other proteins in order to study structure-function relationships free from constraints of natural selection. Among her many, many awards and honors, Dr. Arnold was awarded the National Medal of Technology and Innovation in 2011 by President Barack Obama and was inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame in 2014. She is one of the few individuals who is an elected member of all three national academies, the National Academy of Sciences, the National Academy of Medicine, the National Academy of Engineering, and she is also an elected member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. She holds more than 55 U.S. patents and is very active in her role in technology transfer at Caltech holds a BS degree in mechanical and aerospace engineering from Princeton University and a PhD in chemical engineering from the University of California, Berkeley, embodying in her own career the broad flexibility and creativity and paths that are open to talented engineering graduates. She is a recipient of honorary degrees from Stockholm University, the ETH Zurich, the University of Chicago, and tomorrow, she will be honored and recognized by Dartmouth College by receiving an honorary Doctor of Science degree at commencement. Please join me in welcoming Francis Arnold to the podium. Good morning and many congratulations to you and your families who have supported you on your journeys. And welcome to the wonderful world of not just studying, but actually being an engineer. You are really lucky because you can help mold, even build the world that you will live in. And if you want a world where Technology helps us live sustainably, where we don't continue to deplete our finite resources and degrade our environment. If you want a world where you and your children 
will enjoy a standard of living that my generation has been lucky enough to enjoy, you must work with great engineers. Early in my career, I found such an engineer. I've worked with and drawn inspiration from the greatest engineer of all time. That's nature. Because nature discovered amazing solutions to an incredible array of difficult problems, not the least of which is the problem of being alive. Don't underestimate that. Because nature figured out how to extract materials and energy from widely different sources and convert those to a vast collection of brilliant, self-repairing, adaptive materials, molecular machines, control systems, chemical factories, with great efficiency and not much waste. I feel we should strive to match the elegance and efficiency of nature in any of our human engineered systems. So inspired by nature, I became an engineer of the biological world with the goal of rewriting DNA to solve human problems. I had no clue how hard that would be. Here I was, an engineer at the beginning of the DNA revolution, when we were just beginning to cut and paste DNA with our baby scissors. Remember, this was just a couple of decades after the glorious helical structure of DNA was unveiled for the very first time in some of our lifetimes. I wanted to engineer the molecules of life to make things that would serve us in our bid to provide food, chemicals, materials, and medicine to a growing population. Now, I had no idea how hard it would be to compose new DNA because even though there's just four letters in the DNA alphabet, that code is rich and it's intricate. It's like a Beethoven symphony. It's beautiful, it's stunning. And as much as we would love to sit down at our computers and write like that, we don't, we don't know how. We don't know how DNA even encodes life. We don't know what many of the genes of even the simplest organisms are doing. And I wanted to rewrite that. But then, since when would ignorance stop a good engineer? We engineers, we build using what we have and what we know at the time. And ignorance of the underlying chemistry and physics, well, that can be circumvented with creativity and experimentation. And in fact, that's exactly how nature engineers. Nature figured out how to build new catalysts, materials, organisms, using a process that's as elegant as it is simple, evolution. A few billion years of Darwinian exploration, innovation, trial and error, success and failure, generated a pretty truly stunning array of solutions to the problem of life. And for those of, it, of you who are interested in the internet of things, let me tell you, the ultimate internet of things is the natural world. And nature's been crowdsourcing problem solving for more than three billion years. Just like we human engineers do, evolution builds up from what's already there, basically from parts picked off the biological factory floor and scavenged from a vast repository of previous inventions. And I see every day in my lab that the ability of biological systems to adapt to a competitive and rapidly changing world rests squarely on and arises from that vast instruction list that is genetic diversity. A few modifications to their working parts and poof, the microbes have devised a workaround to that pesky antibiotic that it took us 10 years and a billion dollars to develop. A few mutations in a, in a microbe learns how to eat synthetic materials, oil spills, even plastics, herbicides that were once thought to be non-biodegradable. We, and especially our leaders, have a lot to learn from how nature innovates because it comes straight out of diversity of recombining different parts 
of recombining different experiences. Because without that diversity, we all go down the same path. We accumulate a lot of wrong ideas. And you know what? Nature teaches us that's a sure route straight to extinction. Yes, you have a remarkable ability to control the future by contributing to building it. When you see a problem, you can strive to solve it using the skills that you have learned right here. But you also have control, little control, very little control over many things that matter so much to us. Illness, loss of loved ones, strife in the Middle East, in our own cities, the political climate. And the world is always changing. Some of those changes will be frightening and not necessarily to your benefit. To survive and thrive in a changing world, nature offers another great lesson. The survivors are those who at the least adapt to change, or even better, better learn to benefit from change and grow intellectually and personally. What does that mean? That means careful listening, careful listening, constant learning. It means reevaluating your choices throughout your lives and being willing to make adjustments when it's called for. Adaptation does not mean acceptance, and it certainly does not mean giving up. It means taking on some of the toughest challenges as new opportunities to grow and to learn. When I was asked to speak to you on this day, when you and your families celebrate your hard work and your achievements, my first thought was to say no. I felt I don't have any advice to offer, or even words of wisdom, because so many things in my life have gone awry. Less than a year ago, my beloved son, William, died accidentally. He would have finished his junior year this week in college. His brothers and I experienced a profound ongoing loss, and every day I think of the wonderful man he was and would have been, but then when I look on all of you, I see William. I see his dreams in your faces. I see your enthusiasm, your love of life. I also see perhaps some of your worries. The future is unknown, but you, you will contribute to building it because it's your future. And as engineers, you have a unique skill and a unique responsibility to use that skill to make the world better for, than the one that you find better. Not just for yourselves and your families, but for all the life we share this beautiful planet with. Because this small, beautiful Earth is our shared home that we must care for and deliver in good shape to future generations. So I hope you will find something that you can do well with the skills you have worked so hard to acquire. Now that you are engineers, build something beautiful. Create something meaningful, even if it's small. Every day you can look to it and it will bring you joy. Even it, it will bring you joy, and you can always hear from speakers about passion and inspiration and creativity, and I, I could go on and on and about that, but instead, I will end by asking you not to underestimate the importance of good old-fashioned hard work. Successful people work hard. To be successful in your personal life mean, means working hard on your relationships. Success in your professional life means continuing to build your engineering skills as well as the skills you will need to adapt to this changing world. And those are what you've learned here, how to read, how to write, how to listen, and how to learn. But don't underestimate that power of just working hard, of climbing that mountain just one step at a time because that's another lesson from evolution. When you take one small step at a time, pretty soon you find yourself high above all the clouds. I wish you all the best. 
congratulations. <laughs>